what we're doing. Our fighters today are speedier than ever before. We're designing even faster planes. Some of our new bombers can strike at almost any place in the world. Here's your chance to see all these planes in action. Bring the family to your nearest Air Force base tomorrow. It's open house and you're all invited. What do you say, hmm? That's the way it happened. My son just looked at me expectantly as if to say, well, Pop, my wife gave me the nod. So what could a guy do? Okay, we'll go. Your attention, please. Welcome to Open House at your Air Force Base. We're glad you're here so you can know your Air Force better. even for me. The only trouble was little Jimmy expected me to know a lot of things I didn't know. When I looked over one of the planes and saw my family watching me, waiting for words of wisdom, I knew I was a dead duck. Know your Air Force better, the man said. I don't know the Air Force at all. Where does the guy start? He starts right where you do, Private Citizen USA, by wanting to know your Air Force better. Take fighters, for example. That plane you're wondering about is the F-47, better known as the Thunderbolt. It's a fast and rugged fighter, one of the heroes of World War II. F-47, now taxiing for takeoff. have brought new designs. Planes that fly farther and faster. For speed, the hottest thing with props are outclassed by the new jet fighters. They fly faster than 600 miles an hour. The Shooting Star is the first of our post-war jet fighters. And the F-86, fastest Air Force fighter. The Thunder Jet is another of our rapidly developing line of jet-propelled fighters. As for the F-89, it's the first four-jet long-range fighter, effective night or day, in all kinds of weather. It has a pressurized cabin and a range of more than 1,500 miles. Still another jet fighter, the little experimental F-85, is called a parasite plane because it's designed to be carried aloft by long-range bombers. It's released when necessary to fight off enemy planes. And baby comes back to mother when the fighting's all over. Your attention, please. The bombers now landing are B-29, the famous super fort. The B-29s helped break the back of Japanese resistance with long-range bombing raids. One of them carried the first atom bomb to Hiroshima. And here comes the B-36, the biggest land-based bomber in the world. Yes, sir, that's the truth. This air giant has a far greater range than any other bomber. That's why the Air Force calls it an intercontinental bomber. In tests, one B-36 took aloft and dropped successfully two 42,000-pound bombs. We also have jet-powered bombers the B-45, powered by four jet engines, with a 1,600-mile fighting range at better than 500 miles per hour. And then there's the big Stratojet with six jet engines. It's in the 600-mile-an-hour class, 
with a range of 2,000 miles. And this radical design, XB-49, an eight-jet propelled flying wing. An F-80 buzzing the field. We stood there watching the jets go by. That is, we tried to watch them. Little Jimmy was certainly getting all the excitement he bargained for. As a matter of fact, so was I. Our Air Force is great stuff. I thrill every minute. Easy now. The Air Force isn't all thrills, you know. Take MATS, for example. That's Military Air Transport Service. MATS, for short. A combination of the old Army, Air Force, and Navy Air Transport Commands. Covering more than 80,000 miles of air lanes all over the world. MATS is streamlined to expedite the air transport of military personnel and cargo. Materials carried come in every size and shape, requiring trained ground crews to help speed military supplies to destinations everywhere. It's planes like these which are used for all types of emergency service. MATS also uses large transports like the Navy's Constitution, one of the biggest aircraft of post-war years. Another large transport is the C-97 Stratocruiser. This giant goes 4,000 miles nonstop, carrying a payload of 20 tons, or 137 fully equipped combat troops. Boy, I was learning a lot. But we were all having fun, too. We all got a laugh out of Mickey the midget, run by remote control. That means the operator just jiggled a little lever to put Mickey through his paces. Mickey was a ground demonstration to show people like me how big planes are remotely controlled. The forward B-17 has no operating crew aboard. Its flight is radio controlled by the mothership in the rear. I'll bet you recognize B-17s. They were good airplanes. Did a big job during the war. Today we use them for experimental work of all kinds. Down in Florida, these pilotless planes are used to make test emergency landings in water. Ditching is the Air Force term. By using a radio-controlled ship, shown here in slow motion, engineers can measure the effects of ditching on structures without risking the lives of flight crews. But when lives are actually endangered, well, that's a different story. Attention, please. You will now witness an air-sea rescue demonstration. The B-29 approaching the field is carrying a power lifeboat. In an air-sea rescue mission, the boat is dropped by the rescue plane. The parachute will land it in the water right side up. The boat is equipped with an engine, maps and charts, food, medical supplies, and radio. Sometimes the Air Rescue Service base sends its flying windmills out to give stranded flyers an honest-to-goodness airlift to safety. Besides their use in rescue work, helicopters have many functions. This is a model of a helicopter of the future, the XH-16. It's a cargo craft with detachable compartments designed to carry troops and heavy equipment to regions inaccessible to standard planes. The XH-10 is the first twin-engine transport type helicopter. It carries 10 persons. I was having fun, even though I felt a little ashamed of my low Air Force IQ. Then little Jimmy tugged at me, and he pointed out something different. I brightened up. This I knew. It was a guided missile. I remembered the stories I'd read about guided missiles, and the exciting newsreels I'd seen showing experiments with them. I also 
remembered seeing a film showing JB-2 rocket experiments at the Air Force Proving Ground Command in Florida. After a guided missile is launched, a jet fighter plane is assigned to shoot it down. Yes, you remember your newsreels, Private Citizen USA. And after this day's visit, you'll know and roar about your Air Force. And with your knowledge, and that of your fellow citizens, will come the full public understanding and support the Air Force needs to carry out its mission. A few yesterdays ago, this little airplane flew faster than sound. And this big bomber completed the first nonstop flight around the world. A few tomorrows from today, your Air Force will still be moving forward, helping in emergencies, while continuing its daily round-the-clock service to you and your family. The Air Force has a big mission, and an important one. It involves the future well-being of every American, the peace of all the world. 